This week, mayhem on the Mersey. I understand now why the staff don't stay. I think we need to make you be a better boss. Do I have to teach every single person every single thing? You're a difficult man to work with. What's she going to do? She's not going to kill me, is she? I want to go into a darkened room and walk backwards and forwards. What on earth did Laura Lynn Hardy have to do with this whole scenario? Liverpool, home of football, the Fab Four, and Epstein House, an eight-bedroom hotel owned by Patrick Duggan. To describe myself as a hotelier, I probably consider myself uh, unemployable. I wouldn't like to be working for anybody, particularly a person like myself. Aspiring entrepreneur Patrick bought the former family home of Beatles manager Brian Epstein seven years ago hoping the hotel would be a big draw for fans of the Fab Four. I'd love this hotel to be a sort of a must-see place for people that come to Liverpool. This is the ladies' toilet here, one of our grand uh, achievements. We've got uh, authentic Beatles heritage here, not just themed. This is Brian Epstein here. I believe this to be the actual tuxedo that he owned. It's certainly from the same tailor. Along with overseeing the business, Patrick runs the hotel's public bar. I told you I'm working! But his distinct brand of customer service has brought a deluge of dire reviews. Tea or coffee? Hot chocolate. Tea, coffee. Tea? Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Tea, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just come in, sir. People say my communication skills aren't good. I mean, personally, I don't get it. Madam, if you booked here, I'm sure you'd have the email address. Thank you. What? Hello? I wish I was one of these guys to go, ooh, what a beautiful morning. No, I'm not. And Patrick's approach doesn't just make the guests twist and shout. How many managers have I got through? Well, you know... I'm the chief here, mate. OK, you are. I'm, yes, I'm the chief. Course. I would certainly have had uh, more than 20, I suppose, in the seven-year period. With new recruit Donna set to be manager number 21. Can you work for low wages on, until we start making money, before you start getting greedy. With rooms more bodged than boutique... It's a low-maintenance wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> prices have been slashed, rendering the hotel profitless. The reality is I'm only barely hanging on by my teeth. I have a bookkeeper, I have an accountant. To be honest with you, I don't look at it. I just keep going the way I keep going. Desperate for revolution, Patrick's made a last-ditch cry for help. The business means everything to me. It, it, it's, it, it's my livelihood. It's, it, it's my future. You know, oh, I just keep praying for the sun to shine. Enter the hotel inspector. Donna! I'm going to give these flowers to Alex when she comes. She's coming very shortly. Do you think it's appropriate? No. Why not? It's like you're trying to bribe that before she's even come in the door. Good, good advice, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. But can industry expert Alex Polizzi stop the Epstein sinking like a yellow submarine? Not very prepossessing, is it? The signage is very hard to read. I have no idea what it says. It looks as if it's being run by someone now who isn't quite sure what they're doing. To find out why the Epstein is failing, Alex will stay the night. Patrick. Hello, Miss Blitzy. Alex. Welcome to Liverpool, Miss Blitzy. Thank you. This way, please. Despite Donna's advice, Patrick can't help but turn on the charm. Because I think you're a special person and I'm hoping you'll be a help to my, the rest of my business and the rest of my life, I, I'd be grateful if you'd accept this small bunch of flowers. Thank you very please. much. Thank you. Um, we're putting you in a room too, Alex. Uh, it's on the first floor. Right. This is the key. Yeah. The front door doesn't have a key. It's got a code, and the code is, is written on this key. Thank you. First time I've been <laughs> given flowers in a while. So that's a nice welcome. They've left the price on. 
Will Alex's bedroom, priced at £29 a night, provide an equally warm welcome? Well, it is, at least at first sight, a perfectly fine room. A bit odd combination of things. There's a very dodgy wardrobe. Again, not ideally situated just above the kettle and the table. I don't have any problem with a wardrobe like this, but you just have to think it out a bit better. Um, let's see if there's a mattress protector. No, there is not. There's a hair here, by the way. The thought of staying in a cheap hotel without a mattress protector on the bed slightly turns my stomach. The design, a lot of people say that it's a bit masculine. I suppose that's because largely I've done it myself. I, I am open to ideas, but most of the people giving me the ideas don't uh, um, sympathise with the size of my chequebook. And it's much the same story next door. OK, now I really don't get this place. It's completely schizophrenic. There's this kind of Indonesian-style bed. There's quite possibly the ugliest sofa in Britain. God only knows what this is. Look, the juxtaposition of these things is like how not to decorate. <sighs> Bewildered by the bedrooms, Alex heads downstairs to the hotel's reception and Patrick's much prized memorabilia. This hotel is not themed. I mean, there's nothing that's particularly original or exciting, well displayed. It's like your granny's sitting room. You know, things like those little elephants on the mantelpiece, are they some nod to the Beatles' adventures in India, or is it just some toot that he's picked up from a charity shop to fill a space? I think, all in all, it's just really uninviting. And the Epstein's bar is hardly a glowing tribute. Why is Elvis Presley in this? You know, there's a bit of football, a bit of Elvis, a few funny old food signs. Half-hearted is the word that springs to mind. Finally, the hotel's conservatory, home to Patrick's pride and joy. Who on earth is this? James Bond, I presume. Who are they? Who cares? Who knows? It's very badly laid out. The furniture's a bit odd. It looks as if it's been picked up at a Thai garage sale. And what is this? The cushion turds. I don't know. It, everywhere looks a little bit unloved. I think that's the obvious thing. And it could be made so pretty. With the hotel's theme more flop than Fab Four, Alex wants to find out from her host whether the problems lie deeper than the decor. Right, so tell me where you think the hotel is going wrong. Going wrong? How many managers have you had in the... Uh, not that many, really. How many? Not that many. How many? It's at least 20, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why do you think they leave when they do, as quickly as they do? What puts them off? Grumpiness. Are you difficult to please? Your found language? I'm asking. I'm just finishing the question. I, I, I'll go over to you. I'm waiting for the end of the question because some of the question could, could also apply to oneself. I mean, I, I'm sure occasionally you would uh, use a foul word as well. One, 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 one doesn't initiate a communique with, with foul language. One usually gets bewildered or irate or confused or upset before the foul language would come. Yeah, hands up. I'd... No, I definitely use foul language. I'm always being told off about it by my mother, but I tend not to with staff. When someone who is employing you uses it, then it's quite hard to take. Maybe? Maybe. I'll do what I can. It seems Patrick's charm has failed to impress the hotel inspector. He can bluff it all he likes, but it is not normal to have had 20 managers in seven years. And you kind of wonder the chicken and egg thing. You know, is it not a success because he's had so many managers, or has he had so many managers because it's not been a success? Can Alex help Patrick dance to a different tune? We want them to come and part with their hard-earned cash yep. here. We're going to finish all these little tiny bits. You're a difficult man to work with. <laughs> 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 
Alex Polizzi is in Liverpool on a mission to bring harmony to a Beatles-themed hotel. Do I have to teach every single person every single thing? Owner Patrick Duggan wants the Epstein to be a celebration of the famed Beatles manager and a number one destination for fans of the Fab Four. But a barrage of bad reviews. Shane Patrick is such a knobhead. Manners cost nothing. And a unique management style have left Patrick profitless. If I was to lose this business walk away, I can tell you it would absolutely devastate me. After spending the night, will Alex be any closer to a solution? I didn't sleep brilliantly. Knowing that there was no mattress protector, I slept on top of the bed. The linen is being washed several thousand times, it feels like. It's a bit bubbly. But all in all, you know, this is a £29 a night room. I'm looking elsewhere for the problems. I'm looking forward to breakfast because it will be the first time that I've actually met another member of staff. On duty this morning is Donna Byrne, the newly installed 21st manager of Patrick's reign. So nervous. Today is Donna's first breakfast, but left to her own devices, she's finding it hard to provide a warm welcome. Well, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to sit. Nothing's set up. It's not clear where they expect me to sit, basically. Hi, darling. I wasn't oh, sure if you knew that I was down. A um, bit of a lack of communication, as the problem is near. Do you want to come and take a seat now? See yes. what you'd like to eat. Come All right, check. darling. Thank you. Do you want to come through? Well, let's pick where you're going to sit. As I said, this is my first morning doing breakfast. Shall I just sit, um... Wherever you'd like. Where, OK, great. Well, I'll sit over here, then. OK. Um... Thanks. Can I just have bacon and eggs? And a juice? I'll start preparing your breakfast. And Thanks, we'll darling. OK. It's a wobbly start to breakfast. And it's not just the table that's struggling right. to find its feet. Please tell me he's bought bread. I'll take breakfast without toast. It's embarrassing. The breakfast arrangement here is... <clears throat> I'm ashamed to say... <sighs> I'm ashamed to say that I've only once ever personally served a breakfast myself here. Alex, you're gonna have to forgive me if I'm shaking a little bit. But All right, my darling. Because Don't nothing's me. been put in place and I haven't been told nothing. I'm just. All right, darling. Wait. Relax. I would love you to find something that I can put under this table leg. Slightly. I'll get you something now, Alex. There we go. Thanks, Is that darling. Steady. Poor little sauce. I haven't been here for a week. I understand now why the staff don't stay. There's no plan of action, no routine. It doesn't look like it'll set anyone up much for the day. Hopefully, she'll enjoy it. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. With breakfast failing to raise much cheer, Alex is left in little doubt where the larger problems lie. Obviously, you know, organisation is a big part of what the problem is here. I feel very sorry for Donna. She's clearly stressed out. One of the major problems is definitely Patrick. Alex believes that if the Epstein is going to attract some of the thousands of Beatles fans that visit the city each year, Patrick is going to have to up his game. Let's come here, let's arrive as if we are the Beatles' biggest fan. What would be your first impression? Look for, at the place. For, first of all, I love the way you're talking. But you have 30 seconds to make an impression. Yes. They come here, they think, am I going to bother them? Not really. This, which is quite a good idea, is quite hard to read. I mean, yeah. it's quite small. Until you get in close. Well, you've got these office blinds in this window, which I'm not at Horrible. all keen I, on. I agree with you. And we've got these kind of pub umbrellas. What we want this to be is someone arrives here, they realise it's a significant stop on the itinerary, but also that it's so appealing that you're going to want to come in here find out something and spend some money, because there's no point in them stopping out there and going, oh, look, there, Brian Epstein spent quite a lot of time there when he was a child. Yeah. No, they, well, you want them to come and part with their hard-earned cash yes. here. Yes. And there is nothing that suggests how they can do that. Next on Alex's hit list is the hotel's interior, more retirement village than retro chic. What is the idea of this room? Tell me. 
I thought it was quite nice. Uh, most people yes. actually like this room. Look at the furnishing, darling, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you're thinking is more 60s, Mark Chesterfield sort of look. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Car Carnaby Street look, of course, yeah. Yes. I, I agree with you, I agree with you. And Alex has a question about Patrick's prized memorabilia. Now, tell me, who is this gentleman and why do I not know who he is? This is Brian Samuel Epstein. The reason you don't recognise him is that it hasn't been uh, face-painted. But, darling, you've got nothing saying what you just told me. Absolutely. Anywhere there, I thought no, it was James Bond. Yeah, it, 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 yes, you're correct. It, 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 it needs more, of course. Of We're course. going to finish all these little tiny bits. I'm delighted and excited. OK. With the hotel's issues out in the open, Alex is ready to put her rescue plan in place. First of all, Patrick, however charming and lovely and clever you are, you are definitely one of the problems. I think we need to make you be a better boss. We stop the changeover of staff right now. Yep. There is not a hope of having a professional, successful operation unless you have some consistency. You've taken on Donna now. If you're employing her as manager, that means anyone else you take on has to be taken on in consultation with her. Yeah? I'm, I'm happy to make Donna a manager, but I think it's probably important that I remain as the manager, because otherwise... You're the owner, but you have someone strong running the business. Next, Alex wants Patrick to get organised. We need consistency, as I keep saying. So that means booking procedures, breakfast procedures, pricing structures. I mean, I came down this morning and the poor girl was a quivering wreck at breakfast. And that wasn't your fault, darling, was it? Yeah, I've been like a headless chicken the last few months, the last few years, I suppose. Finally, with the hotel's Beatles theme falling flat, Alex wants to overhaul the outdated downstairs, making the Epstein a genuine destination for fans. What we're going to try and do is have enough here so that tourists want to come here. And I'm going to make a big effort to remind everybody that this is here. In return, though, you have got to tidy up the bedrooms for me and yeah. do all those little bits and yes. bobs. Paint the bottom ceiling, shelves, the lappers. Yeah, and protect us. Mainly, darling, I just want you to feel like you're not on your own. You've got a bit of help. I really feel that. Thank you very much to both of you. OK, good. The hotel inspector departs, encouraged by Patrick's newfound positivity. He's been much more open to suggestions. He's been more cooperative in the sense that together we're trying to find a vision that will define his hotel. I think it's a challenge that I'm, I'm, I'm humbly uh, confident, humbly, that I can keep my end of the bargain. I'm going to try bloody hard. It's not long before the Epstein rescue plan rolls into action. Work gets underway to transform the reception room and bar. A lot of the ideas are kind of harboured myself. I don't often enough think of it from the eyes of a Beatles fan, as she suggested, you know. The bothersome bedrooms get Patrick's personal attention. Hangers above teapot. And the hotel's exterior receives a much-needed nip and tuck. I get the impression that Patrick is very good at issuing commands and he doesn't actually get his hands dirty. Listen, you're younger than me. You just... You, you sort that out there, please. Oh, okay. I think it'll do him good to get stuck in and see what it's like at the bottom floor. This is the start of our exciting new look here at Epstein. My mother would be proud of me if she could see me now. She, she never saw me doing nothing like this in my life. Patrick has also taken on board Alex's advice about the hotel's inadequate signage. I'm taking a chance at designing my own sign. We think it utilises that area pretty well, you know. Next week we're going to put some gold letters on it. I was thinking maybe Brian Epstein, the man who made the Beatles, perhaps, or something like that. I think Brian would be quite happy. God bless him, may he rest in peace. But Alex's plan to inject a little retro chic into the Epstein's interior isn't proving such a big hit with Patrick. I had lovely floor in here. I thought the floor was quite good. Alex's team want an older look, so they want to stain these floorboards black. I was very close to not the phone and it's saying, you know, can you put it back? The fireplace, the wood panels, where's my floor gone? 
Yeah, I mean, close, but... It just makes me very cross that he's already formed an opinion when he hasn't seen the finished result yet. If I don't like it at the end of the day, I'll tell her. What's she going to do? She, she's not going to kill me, is she? And things haven't gone according to plan where Donna is concerned, either. Unfortunately, uh, Donna didn't work out. It's, it's always the same when I hire somebody. I think they're the greatest thing since the sliced pan and they get excited again. It's like a relationship, isn't it? I can understand why he's gone through so many managers, cos I think he draws people in with his charm at first. And then if something goes wrong, as simple as a binder breaking, that can snap him. I think given this particular set of circumstances, if I explain, I think Alex will understand. Can Alex stop Patrick ruining the Epstein's recovery? So do you want to talk now about Donna? Your choice, Alex. Your choice. Oh, I want to go into a darkened room and walk backwards and forwards. I really do. Do I have to be here? Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi is battling to rescue Epstein House, a Beatles-themed hotel in Liverpool run by 54-year-old Patrick Duggan, a man with a unique approach to customer service. He just speaks to people terribly as if he to look. With Donna the latest in the list of ex-managers... It's been one of the hardest times I've ever been through, to be quite truthful. Saving Epstein House is proving an uphill struggle for the hotel inspector. Patrick may well be one of the hardest hoteliers I've ever had. I know that Donna has walked out on him, manager number 21 over the years. Patrick is the root of all the problems at the Epstein Hotel. Alice can be a little bit scary. She's got a presence. She might be disappointed that Donna has gone. Hope she's not going to blame me too much for it. Hello. Hi, Alex. Today, Alex is back, and first impressions are good. Well, I'm glad to see that you've changed the umbrellas. And I see you've made a stab at the Epstein Hotel sign. Did, do, do you agree with it, or do you agree with most of it? I don't mind the picture, but once again, what is missing is the fact that it's the Epstein Hotel. So do you want to talk now about Donna? Your choice, Alex. Your choice. Why did she walk out? Well, um, I, I was trying to explain a few things to her and, and, uh, and she wasn't uh, receptive to what I, my suggestions. Whatever I do here, unless you have good, consistent, reliable service, the whole thing's going to go to shit in a hand bucket in a minute. Yeah, I know, Alice. Now, I hear there's been a bit of trouble with the makeover. I was a little bit... Uh, Underwhelmed with the, the makeover at one stage. You're a difficult man to work with. You know that. You kind of drive people a bit potty. I'm back on track now, Alex. I can Are promise you? you, I assure you. Should we go on to the makeover? OK, Alex. In a bid to tap into Liverpool's lucrative Beatles market, Alex has given the hotel's stuffy reception and bar a swinging 60s facelift. Let me walk you through the makeover. We've changed the look quite dramatically. Tourists who come to Liverpool to be on a yeah. Beatles tour want to see this kind of pop art thing. Yeah? yeah? yeah, yeah. Do you understand yeah, that? Yeah. And you agree? It was a shock, but I, 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 yeah, I understand where you're getting at, and it's a good idea. Hopefully, what this does will encourage people either to have a drink or to spend some money in yeah. some way or other. Yeah. The hotel's cheerless conservatory has also been transformed creating a bright and airy breakfast room that showcases Patrick's prize memorabilia and offers fans plenty to see. We've got an original egg chair. I'm Where's the got... egg man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, cool. And then, of course, we have this over here. Do, do you want to take your photograph, Alex? I hope you're happy with it. I hope yes, you're I pleased. Yes, I am, Alex. I, I'm, I'm very pleased and I'm very thankful. Oh, it's beautiful and colourful, and I love the chair and the peep through and everything else. Mm -hmm. You're being so amenable, Patrick. It makes me very suspicious. <laughs> With the hotel now looking the part, Alex is keen that Patrick's management style also gets a makeover. So one of the reasons I was nervous about coming 
was because of the debacle with Donna. It just set off all the warning flags. You need to be able to keep calm, not only with your staff, but even more importantly, with your customers. I would like to try and help you with this by sending you to do some training with um, Virgin Trains. And they're used to dealing with very pressurised situations and quite a lot happening in a short space of time. Yeah, I do lose it sometimes under pressure and uh, I'm sure a successful organisation have good uh, procedures in place. I'd be delighted to be, uh, to be sent there. Good. Alex has arranged for Patrick to spend the day at a customer service centre of excellence, where he'll be trained to deliver a faultless onboard service to 20 hungry customers. Lesson number one, how to deliver a first-class service. This is a perfect opportunity to interact with your customers. Good, good morning, sir. Are you having a pleasant journey, sir? I'm worried that Patrick will find this difficult because, you know, he tends to fall apart under pressure. You will get the odd customer who's not going to be having a good day. You're talking about the challenging customers? Challenging customers, yeah, definitely. Do you have any of them at your hotel? Unfortunately, yes. My, my way of dealing with just difficult customers is to sort of take them on head on sort of thing. Have you ever heard the saying, the customer's always right? I've heard the customer's always tight. Taking Patrick through the brief is quite interesting. He has some uh, strange ideas around customer service. So it'll be interesting to see how he copes with the pressure, copes with different passengers and getting that service out today. Because we really don't want to see him having a fight. Training complete, Patrick has just half an hour to serve breakfast. But can he pull off silver service with a smile? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard. Uh, we'll be coming with uh, tea and coffee very shortly. Welcome aboard. Thank you. To achieve his task, he'll have to effectively manage his onboard service team. Where, where is the tea and coffee? Tea and coffee pots here. Okay. Do you want me tea? I'm ready for you. Please, yeah. Just relax. Okay. Okay. Deep breath. When he gets busy and starts to flap, he has less of a leash on his emotions, and I think you know he loses his professionalism. So I've broken the regular little bit there. Right. Right. True to form. Patrick begins to crack. OK, Patrick, let's just go back into the kitchen for a minute. Some of the customers were a bit uh, worried about swearing. Who, who was swearing? I must admit, I do occasionally swear, especially when I'm under pressure. Do you need to readjust that for? Yeah, because that was causing you a problem. Let's go back into the kitchen again, not a problem. You know, it is a little bit uh, pandemonium inside in the kitchen, although they're very well organised in there. And, you know, you have to try not to convey that to the customer. You have to give them a pleasurable, pleasant experience. Michael, would you be kind enough to help me? Great to get me out of a jam here. Okay. I'm having trouble with my fingers here. Having delegated the silver service, Patrick sets about serving bread. Would you like brown, white or croissant? Uh, can I have white, please, too? Are you having a pleasant journey, madam? Very nice, thank you. And making amends. Madam, I do hope you forgive me. It was my first day on the job. I'm not used to silver service. I got frustrated and I think I used... Uh, 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 and, an uncouth word, I, I, I yeah. beg your pardon. I mean, you didn't say it to me, but I just overheard it yeah, and yeah, didn't it's... like it. But has he learned his lesson? Alex sent me here to see how valuable other staff are, team members. They've certainly driven home that message today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. I can see that those customers getting off the train today would want to use this service again. I should want people coming back and sort of having a pleasurable experience. And Yeah, I, I, I think I've learned. I've got a lot of things to think about. Back at the Epstein, Patrick has wasted little time finding a new manager, Andrew, number 22. But Alex fears that unless Patrick can improve the way the hotel operates, it won't be long before he'll be looking for number 23. There are huge uh, holes in his procedures. Right, so... Everything that he books, organises, plans, only exists in his own head. But I want to confront him with the evidence of that. First, Alex wants to see if Patrick's daily booking system actually exists. I write it down manually on a piece of paper. PRN, people, rooms, nights. I have like a, a template that I write on it with, with, with a pen. But Alex isn't convinced. So, if, for example, you were not here and a customer walked in and said to Andrew, can I please book a room? He could see from that which three or four rooms he might have available to sell. But this is actually a room checklist, it's a Tina sheet. If you'll allow me, I'll get the correct sheet for you, Alex. Thank you very much, I'd love that. Excuse me. It's all a bit sketchy. Is it in the drawer here? Yes, it is. Thank heavens. 
Tada. This is yesterday's expected arrival summary. Yes, but where is today's? Today's? That even in posh hotels, the, the check-in is 2 p.m. onwards. Uh, it'll be here shortly. I, in a way, and despite myself, I have to admire Patrick for his complete front in trying to pretend that he has a computer booking system on his PC. So where is it? It's on my PC across the room. You know, it's just bonkers. So that, isn't that a little bit of a drawback, darling? Uh, to, 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 well... He actually thought he might get away with that. I mean, you just cannot bullshit a bullshitter. It should be possible for someone to press a button and get the information out. Yes. It shouldn't all depend on you. Yeah, it can be improved, Alex, of course, yeah. With Patrick promising to up his organisational skills, Alex has a two-pronged plan to get the Epstein back on track in time for her final visit. First, she'll invite three prestigious travel writers to stay the night. It would be great if we could get some good press for you. Hopefully they'll be impressed, <laughs> not only with the function room, but with the bedrooms. Please pull out all the stops. Second, Alex wants Patrick to build on her new 60s-inspired makeover and relaunch the Epstein to Liverpool's Beatles tour operators. We want to ramp it up a gear, don't we? Yeah. And, and I think this is a helpful way to prepare you for that. Yeah, yeah. Don't let anything go wrong and don't let any of your staff let you down. OK. OK? I'm looking forward to playing my part, Alex. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, the end result will be we'll be able to fill this place with people who appreciate it. Please, God. The idea behind Patrick's final event is to launch the Epstein to put it on the map. I suppose he feels that he's been ignored completely by other... Um, elements of the Beatles' experience here in Liverpool, and this is hopefully will bring him into the fold and encourage people to see him as an essential part of their trip here. Right, my dear. Remember everything you've got to do. Don't let me down. No, oh, Alex, I won't. Bye. Well, thank you very much, Alex. With Alex gone, Patrick sets about preparing to impress. This is one of the rooms we have to sort out. Bringing the room stock up to scratch and making the most of his Beatles memorabilia. He's also got creative in the car park. We put in this uh, zebra crossing like Abbey Road in London. Remember the man who made the Beatles. I've asked the travel writers to stay the night because I'm very conscious of the fact that he's had terrible reviews before. And I'm hoping this will put some of the worst rumours to rest. To garner good reviews from the travel writers, Patrick will need to prove he can play the gracious host. A little bit nervous, but, but I'm also delighted and excited that uh, Alex has been kind enough to set this up for me. These writers could be hugely important. I am nervous that Patrick may cock up by pointing out everything that's wrong with the hotel. Do you mind if I double-check things for you? Usually I don't find things wrong, but it's worth checking, you know. Do, 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 do. And this is a moment to sell it. I need glass on this. I'm also aware this table needs to be changed. That's fine, you told me enough. He's just got to keep a hold of his tongue and not let it run away with him. Can Alex cut through the chaos? Tears come to my eyes, actually, when you ask it. What on earth do Laurel and Hardy have to do with this whole scenario? Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi is in Liverpool, battling to help owner Patrick Duggan save his Beatles-themed hotel. The reality is I'm only barely hanging on by my teeth. In a bid to banish the Epstein's bad reviews, Alex has invited three top travel writers to spend the night. They're keen to see if Patrick and Epstein House are worth a recommendation. I honestly think this is Patrick's last roll of the dice. He's been here a long time, and he's got to prove that he can make a go of this. Do you sleep well? Yeah. What would you say? Wonderfully. It was so peaceful. Along with trying to impress the journalists, today we'll also see Alex help the new Look Epstein house become part of Liverpool's lucrative Beatles scene. I've got tour operators coming who, if Patrick manages to get it right, will hopefully include him as part of the Beatles tour. It's a big day for the hotel today. It's Alice's last visit. I'm excited. I've been waiting a long time for this. I'm looking forward to it. 
I love the zebra crossing. It looks great. Are you nervous about today? It's quite a big day. Yeah, it's a very exciting day, Alex. Uh, um, you know, the, the, the travel riders are still here. I've yet to speak to them. I've got a speech to make. I know that the reason that this hotel exists is because of the Beatles connection. I want you to concentrate and focus on also transmitting the message that this is a hotel. So even if you're not interested in the Beatles, this is a great place to stay because it's good value for money. You know, let's not, let's not forget that aspect of things. Hoping the tour operators will be impressed with the hotel's Fab Four credentials, Patrick's invited a select group of Beatles aficionados to help add some Scouse charm. But it's not quite the swinging 60s vibe Alex was hoping for. What on earth do Laurel and Hardy have to do with this whole scenario? Another nice mess. Look, twist it. No, just, just untwist it while it's still hot. Just untwist it. I mean, there were a lot of people there wandering around lost and bewildered and clearly with not really an idea of why they're here. This is supposed to be about building business links for the hotel, and I don't think that having it packed full of all these strange and wonderful people is necessarily the best way to sell it to the tour operators. <laughs> With the tour operators en route, Alex does her best to manage the Beatle mania. Can you help me encourage everyone to move through? OK. Can we, can we please... Come, please, come through, go through. Please do go through. I can see a group out there. It's two o'clock, it's your tour operators. Okay. Can you go and be charming? Find out who to talk to. And it's over to you. This is your moment. Okay. Enjoy it. Well, thanks, Alex. Thank you. Hey, how you doing, man? There's, there's wine being served in the conservatory out there. Maybe we can be in touch and see if we can start to get onto the tour or something. That's our intention. It seems Patrick has gone from disorganised host to smooth operator. Yeah, I'll have a glass of wine, please. Oh, thank you. Guests, when they visit here, they'll be surprised what they find, cos, I mean, I was surprised and I've seen a lot of, a lot of memorabilia. It did last time maybe look like a jumble yard, but now as you walk in, you can tell that it's you coming into sort of like a Beatles experience with the Abbey Road, the man who made the Beatles on the floor. With everyone present, Patrick has a few last words. Basically, Three or four sentences, that's all it is. Anybody who wants to see the rooms is welcome. You know, it ain't fancy, but it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's getting better. And um, we've got affordable accommodation, we serve breakfast. We want to get on Beatles tours. Um, basically, that's it. Thank you for coming, and you're all welcome to, to, to another drink, guys. Stay as long as you want. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, <laughs> Speech over, it appears Patrick has won over the crowd. But has he done enough to impress the tour operators? This is an ideal place to extend our tours and see what we can do. Hopefully we can do something. This is a fantastic location for us to come and collect people from. There's lots of things on the Beatles Trail that are in this area as well that might otherwise be, uh, be missed off. So, yeah, we're really keen to get involved with this. With a place on the Beatles Tourist Trail secure, all that remains is for Patrick to win over the travel writers. I think we've all enjoyed it. And I think one of the main things that's come across is your personality. Yeah, you've been a great host. and The atmosphere is really good here, so thank you for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. We've got some questions for you now. With the journalists reaching more than three million readers between them, it's a chance for Patrick to prove he's ready to take the Epstein to the next level. Could you tell us what the prices are for the various rooms? Gina, the truthful answer is I couldn't. But uh, things don't get off to the best start. Yeah, Do I... Just to get to nuts and bolts, sir, if I phoned you now and yeah. said, say, I've heard about your place, I want the Epstein room for a treat for my wife who was a Beatles fan on Saturday. Next Saturday? Yeah. Uh, I'm, it's still ad hoc at, at, at the moment. So I, I would say to anybody that's listening to us, grab, grab it now while it's cheap. I cannot understand why he doesn't get why it's important for people to know how much a room costs. They come here, they want to know what they're going to pay. They don't want him to fish a figure out of his head and decide it at the last moment. Ugh. When it comes to the hotel's unique history, will Patrick get his story straight? Patrick, could you sum up Brian Epstein to me in a sentence? 
It sounds funny, but you know, a tear has come to my eyes, actually, when you ask it. I am passionate about... Uh, trying to... Remember in a respectful way, you know. And finally... Tell me, Patrick, when, when you have a guest staying here, what do you want that person to feel when he or she leaves your hotel? That, 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 that they won't go away and say I'm an asshole. <laughs> 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 that they'll chance coming back again. Mm. OK. <laughs> With the interviews over, has Patrick's honesty been enough to win a positive review? I suppose the million-dollar question is, are you going to find some way to be able to write about him? It's a great story to tell and it warrants a review from, from my point of view. Yeah, but people want to know about this place. The best thing you can do with a writer is say, I've found something fabulous, you should know about it. So I look forward to doing that, Patrick. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to write about the experience. And so within that, you'll have a live web link for the hotel. That's fantastic. Thank you, all of you, so much. Before Alex leaves for the final time, she wants to make sure Patrick will build on today's success. I'm glad that we are ending this on a high. Everyone I've talked to has been very impressed by how much the hotel has improved. Yeah. You are a much more professional outfit, it seems to me, than when I first came yeah. here. And I congratulate you for that. Well, thank you very much. And um, I wish you all the luck, Patrick. I really do. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. I'm glad today went as well as it did. He's made enormous strides in his hotel. He's started to build links with the business community. I hope that's enough to give him the success he so desperately wants. If you keep at it, you'll, you'll get there in the end if, you're, if God wants to you to, and if you hold your nerve and keep the ship on course at times is difficult, but you get there in the end.